shot. And she swallowed it. That is a monster. So how's it going everybody? Trevor Randall's Outdoors Iowa here and just as promised last week I'm going to show you this awesome fish chowder recipe. So what you're going to need is you if you can find fish stock I found it's extremely hard to find. Um, I'm using clam juice this time last time I used seafood stock which I did find seafood stock locally but it's also hard to find but not as bad as fish stock. Fish of choice. These will be the crappies that I caught. Uh, there's quite a bit of meat there. There'll be plenty for this recipe. Chopped up Yukon Gold potatoes. Um, three to four of them, depending on what size they are. Chopped up celery. Chopped up onions. Now I've got thyme, bay leaves, and rosemary. Um, shoot, let me remember here. Chives. And then parsley. And then you'll need bacon. You got a few different seasonings here. You got coarse salt and fresh cracked pepper, and then some oyster crackers to go with. And then you also need some heavy whipping cream, about two cups worth. So I will take you to the Dutch oven, and we'll get to cooking. All right. So to get started, give the Dutch oven some heat. Gonna be a low to medium heat, and we're gonna get our bacon cooked. All right, pan's getting good and hot. We're gonna go in with the bacon. Oh yeah, here's the sizzle. So for a fish chowder, you want a uh, pork fat base. So that's why you cook the bacon first and then you use the fat from the bacon to help finish with the chowder. It gives it the creamy uh, taste it needs and all the flavor. It really complements it. So make sure when you're done you leave that bacon fat in there. I'm doing a whole pound of bacon. This will make enough to feed about four to six people, maybe a little bit more. All right, bacon's in. Make sure it gets, gets good and cooked. Doesn't stick to the bottom. You can do this in a regular pot too. I just I like my cast iron, so I'm using my Dutch oven. All right, so I'll make sure this bacon gets done. I'll be right back with you guys. All right, so I got the bacon cooked down pretty good. We're gonna. Take it out of the pan or out of the oven. She's got nice and warm. She's smoking on me. Try to let it drip as much as you can so you can save some of that fat. It's gonna be your base flavor, your base for your whole clam chowder or your whole fish chowder. The whole flavor profile, everything. All right. So remove your bacon and put it off to the side. Now you're gonna go in with your onions and your celery. And basically, you just want to cook them soft and rough. Get a little caramelization on them. Oh man. I'll tell you what, once you get cooking on this recipe, a lot of those uh, herbs are all fresh. Even if you don't have fresh, the smell though is just amazing. We'll be smelling through the whole house. Gonna add some salt and pepper. So 
fresh ground is usually the best. I try not to go too crazy on the salt. Still gonna be on a low to medium heat too. All right, so I got the onions and celery getting softened. We're gonna start throwing in some seasonings. I'm gonna use about half of my thyme. Two bay leaves. And small, a couple pinches of rosemary leaves. And then also some chives. Leave some to top the, the bowl with when we're done. Now we're going to go into the potatoes. And your fish stock or clam juice, whichever you want to use. Go ahead and hit it with some more salt and pepper. Give it a good start. All right, so you want to bring this to a simmer. And you want to make sure these potatoes are cooked about three quarters of the way through. So you want to just barely be able to stick a fork in them with, with ease, but not all the way through. And then once that's done, then we're ready to add our heavy whipping cream. And I'll show you the rest. All right, so it didn't take long. We've got it up to a simmer now. Now we just got to wait for the potatoes to get to about three quarters of the way done. All right, so my potatoes are about three quarters of the way done. I can just barely stick a fork through them. I'm gonna lower the heat, really low simmer. And I'm going to add my heavy whipping cream. You wanna be real careful with the heavy whipping cream. You don't wanna scorch it or burn it. So you keep it on the low heat. So we wanna bring it back to a low simmer. While I was waiting for the potatoes to simmer, I went ahead and I cut up the fish. You just want to do all bite-sized pieces, just all similar in size. That way it all cooks about the same. Now I can add in the rest of our thyme. A little bit of fresher thyme. A little bit of parsley. Some more salt and pepper we're just looking to bring it back to a low simmer and make sure those potatoes are done now if you made this for any reason and it's a little too much liquid for you like it's not as thick as you want it a good way of thicken it up is just to add a little bit of flour it looks like I'm gonna be doing that with this recipe here doesn't take much it'll also thicken when you uh, let it sit at the end too. So this is also the time when you put the heavy whipping cream in. Take some of that bacon you set back. Break it up into small pieces. Go ahead add it into the chowder. Makes for some really really good flavor. And save back some of the other bacon so that it's all broken up. You'll need that at the end. Potatoes are just about done. So now we're going to take Mix this flour in so we can get it thicker. Already looking better. There we go. That's what I want. I'm going to raise the heat just a little bit and we're going to add the fish in. So what you're looking to do, you add the fish in and you're going to fold it in. You don't want to overcook this fish. You want it to stay in the main chunks that it is give you that nice meaty bite that you're looking for just nice and easy stir it in so now what you're looking for is you want it to come back to a little small simmer doesn't take much and then once it starts to simmer again you cut the heat completely and it's ready to sit until that fish is done cooking what you'll do is you'll top with a few pieces of butter Put the lid on the pot and let it finish for about 10 minutes. All 
All right, the fish has been sitting. It's already started coming back to simmer here now, you can see. So we're going to throw a few dollops of butter in here. Cut the heat. And set the lid on. You're gonna wanna let that sit for about 10 minutes to finish off. And after the 10 minutes, you take a piece of fish out, check and make sure the fish is all the way cooked through and it's ready to dish up and serve. I'll show you guys how you uh, finish it off at the end. All right, it's been 10 minutes. Let's get this opened up. Oh yeah. The butter just gives a nice golden rich color on top. All right, we wanna pull a piece of fish and you're looking for if the fish is cooked all the way through or not. And I can already tell you it is because I just watched it flake apart. Let me put this camera down. Oh yeah, look at that. Flaking perfectly. <laughs> mm. That fish tastes amazing. <laughs> Alright. Yeah. Follow me over to the station. So you've got your bacon that you had from earlier broken up into more pieces. chives and parsley personally I like the chives on it but we're gonna do some parsley some bacon don't have to be stingy with bacon we had a whole pound of it and a couple oyster crackers And that is dinner. So good. All right, let me go get the kids and we'll see what they think. I want you to try a bite of it. Got the kids in here, they're gonna be I my taste. I gotta try this with it, I promise you I'm trying to eat it. They're gonna be my taste testers. Why don't you scoot Amy's taste bowl? Tester? What if it kills me? Which one's Amy's bowl? Whichever one you didn't touch. Ow. All right, this is fish chowder, you guys. Good? Mm -hmm. good. Skylar approved? Yeah. Mm. My mouth is trying to not kill Go ahead and go eat in the living room. What do you think, Amy? Amazing. Amazing. You heard it. Amazing. Are you posting that on YouTube? Yes. Dork. Ah, okay. Still waiting on the girlfriend. She's not coming in here yet. So I'm ready to eat and uh, hopefully you guys get a make this recipe it's really good if you guys like chowder or soup it's a really hearty meal it's not that difficult to make it doesn't take a lot of ingredients um and it's so good the flavor is amazing so let me know if you guys try it hopefully you guys enjoy it don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel and keep an eye out for some more recipes and some outdoors adventures i'll catch you guys later